Mga kapatid, palapit pa rin ng palapit si Typhoon Ruby sa lupa sa huling update ng pag-asa na sa 250 km per hour ang lakas ng hangin nito. Ang gustiness naman up to 290 kph at ang pag-ulan naman na dala nito ayon sa pag-asa na sa 15 hanggang 25 mm per hour sa loob ng diametro ng 700 km. Dahil nasa dagat pa ito, posibleng lumakas pa si Ruby bago tumama sa lupa. Mamayang madaling araw na ang landfall ni Ruby, tinutumbok pa rin niya ang Mindanao at ayon sa pag-asa sa Baganga, dito po yan, sa Davao Oriental, ang posibleng landfall nito. Mamayang alas 4 hanggang alas 5 ng umaga po yan. Kung hindi na iiba ang galaw ni Ruby pagkatapos ng Baganga, dadaan ang mata nito sa timog naman ng Dumaguete City. Pagkatapos sa Roja, sa Palawan naman, bukas ng Umaga. Eh, dahil nga dito nakataas na ang signal number 4. Sa signal number 4 po, karamihan ng mga infrastruktura ay maaring masira at matutumba ang mga malalaking puno. Posible rin ang seryosong pinsala sa agrikultura at posibleng mawalan ng kuryente at signal ang landline at cellphone. Posible rin makaroon ng storm surge o pagtaas ng tubig dagat na posible magdulot ng matinding pagbaha sa mga susunod na lugar. Hindi po biro ang storm surge na kahit isang metro lamang ang taas dahil lagpastao pa rin ito at posible magdulot ng matinding pagbaha, lalo na sa coastal areas. Wag na wag pong maging matigas ulo, pumunta na po sa mga evacuation center dahil yan nga ayon sa pag-asa. Si Ruby na ang pinakamalakas na bagyo na maglalanfall sa bansa ngayong 2050 at ang pinakamalakas na rin para sa Mindanao sa loob ng limang taon. Yan na muna ang latest tungkol kay Typhoon Ruby mula sa Action Weather Center. Ako po si Leah Cruz. The weather report you've just seen is set in 2050 and it's just a possibility given the direction that the world is taking now. Things may actually turn out to be much worse. The Philippines is a nation made up of 7,107 islands with around 36,000 kilometers of shoreline. We are also the third most disaster-prone country in the world and we experience an average of 20 storms every year, 90% of which affect the country, some causing great destruction. Storms like Ondoy or Quetzana in 2009, Sandong or Washi in 2011, Pablo or Bompa in 2012, and Yolanda or Haiyan in 2013. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Philippines is at great risk. It is in the Philippines where the highest sea level rise has been recorded since 1901. The global average is at 19 centimeters. In the Philippines, a rise of 60 centimeters has been recorded. That's three times the global average. In this map from Climate Central, we see that the Philippines experiences an average rise of 6 to 12 millimeters in sea level per year, depending on the area. With global temperatures rising, the oceans are getting warmer, which will produce stronger storms or tropical cyclones. Because of our location in the Western Pacific, we get a lot of these storms. When you combine a stronger typhoon with higher sea levels, we're looking at even more destruction after we're hit by a storm more than we see today. That means more of this. What can we do? About all these changes about all these risks that we expect, I mean, to prepare for them, basically? Or is there any recommended plan of action that we can take as a Filipino people? Uh, we need to prepare our communities, and that means uh, effective and uh, meaningful land use planning. We need to get, get people out of harm's way and uh, locate our homes our infrastructure, our production, food production systems, where they will uh, not be drastically affected by all of uh, the impacts of climate change. We call that climate change adaptation. We need to adapt because changes are, are taking place. Uh, we need to take care of uh, the remaining pristine areas, uh, the natural ecosystems, our forests, our mangrove areas, our co coral reefs. This, this, uh, these natural systems will be important in uh, serving as buffers when climate impacts start to affect us. If fisher folk can be instruments for protecting the marine resources and the coastal resources of the Philippines by fishing sustainably and uh, reporting uh, illegal activities and also um, establishing a circle of protection from uh, abusive 
and uh, short-sighted fishing practices that lead to the depletion of our fisheries and our coastal resources. That, that, that will go a long way. We find the intersection between science and experience, especially you also have knowledge that emanates from the grassroots. So you, we call that indigenous knowledge and farmers, fisher folk know that things are really happening and uh, for them uh, uh, it is an existential question. It threatens their, their, their existence and, and their real lives and livelihoods are at stake. We're a developing nation. How do we make sense of fitting preparation for climate change into all these other issues that we have? I, I believe that uh, the only option for us is to build a better nation. That means eliminating corruption, building infrastructure, uh, roads, bridges, farm-to-market roads in a way that it will withstand uh, extreme events. Uh, that means, of course, eliminating the leakage from uh, the, the, uh, the funds that we use uh, to, uh, to build our nation. We also need to build a nation that is educated, a nation that cares, uh, and, and that means also a nation that protects uh, its natural resources, because natural capital is, uh, is what will make a difference as we try to cope with climate change. And so this is uh, the generation that can, that can address this. Uh, so it's uh, rather uh, uh, great to be part of this generation, because um, people in the future generations will look up to our generation and, and, and say, those guys made it happen. Climate change is affecting the weather everywhere. It makes it more extreme and disturbs established patterns. That means more disasters, more uncertainty. We can reduce the risks by cutting global greenhouse gas emissions and building low carbon economies. Let's work together to make our societies safer and more resilient. Please join me in taking action on climate change. Thank you.